Hi everyone, welcome to this video tutorial on Leaving Cert Project Math Strand 5. In this video, we are going to be looking at roots of functions. So we're going to see what exactly is meant by the root of a function. And we're also going to look at how we find roots, either when we are given a graph of a function or when we're given an equation. First of all then, what exactly do we mean by the root of a function? Well, the roots of a function are just the input values that will give you an output of zero. So if your function was y equals x squared minus four, where x is your input and y is your output, the roots of that function would just be the x values that give you a y output of zero. And as we'll see in some later examples, we can solve for these roots by letting y equal zero in our equation. We can also easily find the roots of a function when we are given its graph. Let's say I had a graph of my function y equals x squared minus four. So I'm going to plot a rough sketch on my x and y axis. So it would look something like this. Now remember that the roots of a function are just the x values that will give me a y value of zero. So that means that on my graph, I'm looking for the points where the y coordinate is zero. So where is y zero? Well, of course, along the x axis. So it's where my graph intersects the x-axis that my y-coordinates or my outputs will be zero. So that's at this point here and this point here. And those are the roots of my function. Those x-values, those x-coordinates at those two points are the two roots of that particular function. So here we're given the graphs of two functions and we just need to find the roots. So remember that when we are given the graph of a function, we can easily read off the roots just by looking at where the graph crosses the horizontal axis. So in this case where we have x and y axes, it's just where the graphs cross the x axis. So if we first look at the quadratic function on the left, we see that there are two roots because there are two points where the graph crosses the x-axis. And that's at the point where x is minus four and where x is two. So our roots, we can simply write as x equals minus four and x equals two. So moving on to the cubic function we have on the right, hopefully you can see that there are three places where the graph crosses the x-axis which means we have three different roots. Another word we can use for different is distinct. So we can say that this cubic function has three distinct real roots. And we can write them in the same way as we did with the quadratic. So just x equals two. We have minus six. The second one here looks like it's at about minus one. So x equals minus one and then the last one is at x equals four and that's that's all we have to do so maybe you noticed that the quadratic has two roots while the cubic has three roots and that is actually always the case and an easy way to remember that is because quadratics start with an x squared term and cubics start with an x cubed term. So you can think of the two as meaning it's gonna have two roots and the three here for the cubic as meaning it's gonna have three roots. So then if you had a polynomial which started with x to the power of four you would expect it to have four roots. And if it started with x to the power of five, it would of course have five roots. 
In the examples on the last slide, the quadratic function crossed the x-axis at two different points and the cubic function crossed the x-axis at three different points. But on this slide, we've got something slightly different going on. So if you notice here, the quadratic is just sitting on the x-axis. It's not actually crossing it. And that, of course, is only happening at one point. But you may be thinking, well, I thought a quadratic function had to have two roots. Well, that's true. So what we have here is something called a repeated root. So basically the root x equals minus one is used twice. In this cubic function, we have one place where the graph completely crosses the x-axis and a second point where the graph just touches the x-axis. So we have um, one instance of a repeated root, so minus six there, x equals minus six is used twice. So x equals minus six, x equals minus six, and the last root is just used once, x equals four. And that makes up the three roots for our cubic function. So later in the video, we're going to see how we can use uh, roots of a function to come up with its equation and what a repeated root means in that case. But before that, I just want to talk about how we actually find roots when we're given an equation. 